Hey, how's it going? Tim Warner here, host of the Inform IT Certification Reference Guide, and this is the second installment of a screencast series we're doing called the Test Taking Skills Clinic. Today's subject matter is CompTIA Exam N10003 Network Plus. Now, although the subject matter is Network Plus, anybody who's interested in building his or her test taking skills can benefit from this screencast series. What we're doing is taking two representative certification items and drilling into the test taking mechanics behind the exam. So we'll spend just a moment meeting the exam, so to speak. We'll look at the book and author from which I've pulled these two practice questions, and then we'll get to work. So again, the exam is called N10-003. It's an entry-level network technician exam from CompTIA. A lot of folks who are new to the IT industry tend to go for this exam. You can navigate to certification.comptia.org for more information on it. The book from which I've pulled these questions is from our exam cram line. This is the Network Plus second edition book. A couple folks, Mike Harwood and Drew Bird, both of them Canadians. Canadians, eh? Mike is a systems engineer and a courseware developer. Drew is an IT consultant and a technical trainer. So you've got one guy who's particularly skilled at organizing content and another folk who's person, I should say, who's particularly good at presenting content in a classroom. That's a nice team, I would think, for putting together a technical instruction book like this title. I've grabbed the screen captures used for this presentation from our Safari Books Online offering. If you haven't been there, it's safaribooksonline.com. It's a fantastic subscription service from which you can perform custom searches across not just our Pearson titles, you know, the Addison Wesley, Q, Exam Cram, all of this stuff that I'm sure if you're in the IT industry for a while you've read and referred to, I certainly know I have, but you can get to non-Pearson stuff as well, like Microsoft Press, O'Reilly, etc. It's fantastic. That's all I'll say about that. Now then, let's get down to busy work here. Question one. Folks say that CompTIA exams are easier than other vendors' exams because of the subject matter and because the questions are so straightforward. Well, sometimes that straightforward nature, in other words, fairly short item stems and very brief answer sets, can turn around and bite you in the rear. Sometimes brevity leads to ambiguity. Let's take a look at this question. During a busy administrative week, you install a new virus suite in your network of 55 computers, a new RAID, away, RAID array excuse me, in one of the servers, and a new office suite on 25 of the computer systems. After all of the updates, you're experiencing system errors throughout the entire network. Which of the following would you do to help isolate the problem? Okay, at first blush, this is a pretty bread-and-butter network troubleshooting issue. First blush, again, you might ask yourself, how much of this is just fluff and how much of this is actually relevant to answering the question? After all of the updates, you install a new virus suite in my network of 55 computers, I installed a new RAID array, and a new office suite. After all of the updates, we now have system errors. What are we going to do? Are we going to disable the RAID array? Well, how does installing a new RAID array have anything to do with updates? Uninstall the office suite. Well, again, the ambiguity comes in because you start to bring your professional lives in and you think, well, yeah, I installed office and then I immediately went to Microsoft Update and installed the latest updates for it, right? And when I installed the RAID array, I'm sure I updated the driver. See, this is where you can start to overthink, and this is where CompTIA exams can sometimes get difficult. You see what I mean? C, check the Virus Suite vendor's website for system patches or service packs. D, reinstall the virus software. According to the guys who wrote the book, C is the correct answer. They're saying check the Virus Suite vendor's website. So their point is stick with the black stuff. Stick, and that's exactly what I teach my students, never read into the item. Although you may be coming into your certification exam with tons of real-world experience, and there's nothing wrong with that, you in a sense have to leave that, check that at the door. In this item, you look and you see what you've done. You've installed a new virus suite, you've installed a new piece of hardware, 
and you've installed an office suite. After all of the updates, and here, best we can factor, the virus suite and the updates are meant to be linked, not the office suite and the updates. And that really is the trick of it, to think at a level where you're not thinking too deeply into the item and not overthinking and not reading into it. But at the same time, you have to think deeply enough and logically enough to where you stand the best chance to answer the question correctly. Now then, question two. This includes a screen capture. Chances are you would see an actual picture of a Windows command prompt instead of what you're seeing here. A user calls to inform you that she can't access the internet from her system. When you visit the user, you run ipconfigall and see the following information. What's the most likely reason the user is having problems? So you see a run of ipconfig. The purpose of this item is to test, can you interpret ipconfig all output? And if you go through this information, I hope that it makes some sense to you. Forget this little pop-up here. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is my work computer that I'm recording this screencast on. I hope that you'll see that something is missing right off the bat. Actually, the distractors in this item, you see that primary DNS suffix is missing. You see that default gateway is missing. What else is missing? Anything else look wrong? IP address and subnet mask, do they look okay? DNS servers, do they look okay? Well, hopefully you know enough about IP addressing that 192.168 is by default a class C address and that subnet mask is correct. The DNS servers are in the same range, the same subnet as our IP address. So this user should be able to communicate with DNS with no problem at all. Primary DNS suffix is really not a big deal. As long as this user is able to communicate with DNS by IP address, he or she does not need a primary DNS suffix. So that's a red herring. Again, what's the problem here? The user cannot access the internet from her system. Well, you know what a default gateway is, right? Even though a user can contact a DNS server, that's great. The DNS server happens to be on this user's local subnet. A default gateway happens to be the router address. The user's never going to get beyond the user's own local subnet unless and until that user can connect to his or her default gateway. So in this case, if we look through the choices, the system is on a different subnet from the DNS servers. By interpreting this output, we know that's false. DNS is not enabled. Can we defeat that by looking at this? DNS enabled, no. Well, we see DNS is not enabled. This is, it must be a statically assigned computer, but that shouldn't hose anything up because the user has a correctly assigned IP address and subnet mask and DNS servers. The subnet mask is incorrect. No, we see that that's not true either. And that leaves us really by process of elimination at D. The default gateway setting is not configured as our correct answer. So there it is, friends. I hope that that was helpful to you. As wrap-up, again, my name is Tim Warner. Please feel free to email me with any questions, comments, concerns, etc. Timothy.Warner at Pearson.com is my address. InformIT.com forward slash on certification is the home page for these screencasts. You can check out my blog and other interesting things, at least interesting as far as I'm personally concerned, at the InformIT Certification Reference Guide. Go to InformIT.com and run a site search or check out the upper right corner of the page, click the reference guide links, and you'll find me. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope that you got a lot out of this screencast. Take good care.